Welcome and good morning. Chris Principe, publisher of IT here at Money 2020. Truly one of the great events that happen in Europe every year. And we're really pleased to be in the host city of Amsterdam, the Netherlands. This is a city where the hospitality has been amazing. This event has been amazing. Money 2020 puts on an event that's all about who is here. And who is here today with me is my guest, Eduardo. Hi, Eduardo. How Hi, are Grace. you? Great. Great to meet you. Thanks good, good. for having us. Good, please. Thank you. And can you tell us a little bit about the business? Yeah, well, Veritas is a company that we started 10 years ago, and we do a very simple and complex thing. We tell apart between a real and a fake identity. In this world, when you have fake identities that you can create easily a fake identity, what is more important for a bank, for any business, for any digital business to know if you have a real person behind or not? This is what we do. Knowing that you are a real person or a fake identity. And this is our, let's say, the core of our business. Well, I think this is a, a really a role that I think people don't really see and appreciate, but so important. How do you meet the challenges that your customers have with fake identities? Yeah, we started by, uh, you know, uh, first of all, banks, especially uh, following regulation, wanted to create new customers digitally. But the first thing that they need to know was to know whether you are a real person, that you are not a money launderer. So we do that by using AI, uh, verifying ID documents, verifying your face biometrics with full privacy, doing your likeness detection. So no, we know that you are who you are. And once we have this identity verified, then the bank or the insurance company or the mobility company or telco can authenticate for who you are, for your biometrics. Okay. So this is what we basically do and we provide with our own technology. So it's interesting because you, you mentioned one of the, the key words that we're hearing all over Money 2020 today, which is AI. Yes. Can you tell me a little bit more how you incorporate AI in helping your customers? Yeah, we, we started back in 2013 doing uh, deep learning and machine learning models to train our systems, to train our systems, to verify a, an ID document, to also do face biometrics. So we train our AI models to tell apart that our one face belongs to one person or not with no bias, with no uh, race bias, with no gender bias. So all those models are based on AI. So let's say that we are an AI native company. We are not taking the wave of AI. We had to use AI and we were one of the very first companies in the world to use AI, in this case for identity verification. It was 2013, our first AI models. So that's really interesting. That's a term that I really haven't had, AI native, right? We hear digital native, but AI native, especially in, in how fast moving this is, you guys do start in, in 2013. I mean, we, we probably weren't thinking about it at all, but clearly you were. Yeah, no, we started by doing really uh, interesting stuff, even for people that print money, we're using AI to detect fake in money, physical money. And then we started to go in the digital side, but we started doing hardware, software based on AI back then. And then all that knowledge, we started to apply to the digital identity. And then is the time when we really uh, sparks uh, Veritas off, right? So let me ask you then, with um, the financial community, you have regulation, you have the, these things that uh, kind of help you with the framework. But when you get into the, the corporate or the commercial space, it's a little bit different. How do, how do you adjust to that? Well, first of all, uh, there are a lot of regulations, of course, in the banking industry and any, any other industries. Uh, specifically, of course, you have data protection regulation that you have to comply 100%, not only in Europe, but also BIPA in the USA, in different states, well, everywhere in the world. Then you have the industry-specific standards that requires you to comply with certain standards that we help our companies to, to comply with. And then there's this new AI regulation in Europe, yes. which is very important in terms of identity and biometrics because it sets clearly a set of rules. What Europe says about biometrics and the use of biometrics is that you cannot use biometrics in open spaces without the consent and voluntary action of the people in order to control people out there. That is prohibited in Europe. But when you are using biometrics in closed space with the voluntary consent, the risk is known or, or, or very low. So that, may, uh, that uh, sets a clear standard of rules saying that, okay, uh, AI-powered biometrics are 
safe by uh, by design and by defect. So the regulation side sounds really important. And it, it sounds like in your case, not only do you have to worry about and, and work on advancing your product, but you have to like almost anticipate what regulations are going to happen. Quite a challenge. Yeah, well, we always like to say that uh, technology and regulation goes hand in hand. Uh, okay. Hand with hand. So uh, we started to develop the technology and to develop our compliance and regulation department because we are helping the regulators to understand the technology so that they can not over-regulate, they cannot under-regulate, understanding the real risks of the technology so they can make the regulation perfect. That's why the AI regulation biometrics, they don't judge the technology. They judge the use of the technology. So a knife is very good to cut cheese, right. but if I stab you, it's not, it's not that right, okay? <laughs> so it's, like, it's, it's the same. So we are always, always dancing in this, you know, we are state-of-the-art technology, but state-of-the-art regulation. So we always are with the regulator, regulation bodies working and understanding, making ourselves understandable for them so that the regulation, again, it's in the sweet spot. It's not over-regulated, not under-regulated. So, you know, the, the ability to understand all these things and put them together is, uh, is quite important and in your product it certainly shows that. So let me understand why you've chosen to be here at Money 2020. Well, we started, it's not that we started, uh, that we chose this year to come here. 2019 was our very first uh, Money 2020 in Amsterdam. So it is six years ago. And we came two people with a roll-up. Okay, back then in 2019, we were 35 people. Mm -hmm. Now Veritas is an organization of 250 people wow. with Excellent. offices in nine countries with our own 100% proprietary technology with customers very happy out there. So, you know, this event for us is, is very important because we meet uh, our customers, our friends, we meet new potential customers. We also showcase our technology and the future of our technology. What, how are we envising also the future of the technology, how it's evolving. So for us, it's not new and it's been very, very successful uh, venue for us in this well, last I'll year. I'll tell you, the, the success that you've, you've encountered, you know, speaks to the quality of the product and really, really pleased to hear that. But you mentioned something that we want to talk about right now, which is the future. So give me an idea of the future for the company, but also some insight into the, what you see in the industry. Yeah, well, there's one thing currently that we are pushing a lot, which is, uh, you know, always focus on fraud prevention and user experience, both, right? So you need your systems work in an environment, right? But also be a lot of resistance against fraud especially with uh, synthetic AI and generative AI, in which fraud has been democratized. So we have a lot of uh, new developments and technologies operating out there to detect injection attack, presentation attack, so to prevent against fraud, that's super important, and the user experience. So this is, let's say, the present for our face biometrics, voice biometrics, document verification. And the future, we think that the future lies in self-sovereign identity. So self-sovereign identity is the way that we think identity is going to be handled, not only in Europe, but in the world. So like our physical wallets, we are going to end up having a digital wallet in which we are going to store all of our identity credentials. And we have the ability to share our credentials, but only when we want, who we want to share it, and when we want to share it. So we have full control of our identity credentials, with the advantage also of only having selective disclosure. Like, I am from Spain, or I'm over 18, so I don't have to disclose fully my, my, my identity. So, we are truly convinced that the future of identity relies on self sovereign identity. That's why we are also have made a big bet on that, and we have built already the full uh, wallet ecosystem, and it's in place and up and running. Well, boy, that sounds like exciting times coming up, and I really like the, the idea of uh, this self uh, identity because it, it gives me the choice to decide what to do as well as having the control over it. Exactly. You see, in your, in your physical wallet, you choose whom you share your ID card or your driving license or your sports club credential or your loyalty card. So in the digital world, it must be the same because we move from, from a world in which we, you have a lot of silos of uh, data. So every company has your data. That is the old model. Then we have this model in the middle from Google, Amazon, that says logging with Google, logging with Amazon, logging with Facebook, and they act as brokers. 
which is good from the user experience point of view, mm -hmm. but a broker is a commissioner, always. <laughs> so you compromise your data more than what you were compromising your data. So this is a middle ground, good in terms of user experience, not that good in terms of uh, data protection, but the new way of self-sovereign identity, you are in full control of your data. So you can control what you share, whom you share it, and when you share it. And you can revoke this uh, credential uh, sharing and so on. So it's a very, very exciting moment, I would say turning point in the identity space. Well, I tell you, I'm excited to hear that. Excited for, for you and your company and, and want to wish you the continued success. And thank you very much for spending Thanks some for time with Financial IT. Thank you very much.